Hello and welcome to the latest episode of the Retirement Cafe podcast, which is sponsored by My Financial Planner. Not knowing when you can afford to retire or what your pensions and investments will provide can be worrying. My Financial Planner provides independent, fixed fee retirement planning advice, bringing clarity to your financial future. At My Financial Planner, we build a financial plan for your retirement and equip you with the knowledge to implement the plan and, if necessary, buy any products you need yourself. Find out more about getting a plan to fund the retirement you really want at myfinancialplanner.co.uk. I am delighted to welcome back to the podcast today author and behavioural finance expert Brian Portnoy. In episode 49, Brian shared his insights of how into how money figures in a joyful life. This time, Brian joins me to talk about his new book. Now, have you ever wondered how the financial experts and pundits who advise on how we should invest our money do indeed invest their own? Well, finally, the curtain has been drawn back on the money management behaviours of 25 high-profile industry experts, including the authors. In How I Invest My Money, finance experts reveal how they save, spend and invest a book that Brian co-authored with the co-founder and chief executive of Ritz Hold Wealth Management, Joshua Brown. Brian joins me on the podcast to explain how the contributors' personal stories help reinforce the idea that every situation is unique and investing is a matter of perspective. We discuss some of the key messages and how virtually every essayist in the book offers an unapologetic example of investing in something that defies the laws of financial logic which proves there are many ways to invest and that perspective is key. With engaging illustrations by my friend and multiple guests, multiple time guests on this very podcast, Carl Richards, Brian's book inspires readers to think creatively about their financial decisions and how money figures in the broader quest of a content life. I found this book really fascinating, so I hope you enjoy my conversation with Brian. So welcome to the Retirement Cafe podcast, Brian Portnoy. In fact, welcome back, Brian. How are you? I'm great. It's good to be back. Um, It was fun meeting you in Birmingham a year ago. I wish we were in person somewhere, but yeah. I know, I know. It's been it's been a it's been a nuts 12 months, hasn't it? Oh yeah, crazy. So uh, so tell me, tell me what you've been up to. I mean, you've got some big news, I know, but tell me what, what you know, since I saw you in Birmingham in the UK, what have you what where are you now and what have you been doing? Yeah, well, other than not having left my basement for seven months, it's been a busy time. Um, so I launched my own company um a few months ago, which has been in the works for a while. It's called Shaping Wealth, and it's a financial wellness platform. Right. Um, with the idea of um helping people understand and achieve this notion of funded contentment we talked about last time, this this idea of true wealth, the ability to underwrite a meaningful life. So what I've done or I'm in the process of doing is building out a content and coaching platform for financial advisors uh, to work more comprehensively with their clients for corporate financial wellness programs to offer cool programming to their employees and to do a lot of stuff in the community um, in terms of financial literacy and financial education. So yeah, sh- shaping wealth, um, shapingwealth.com. That's, that's up and running. And I- I'm, uh, I'm truly excited. I, I haven't jumped out of bed to get work done in such a long time. And so the last few months have felt great. I mean, uh, under these strange circumstances, I almost feel a little guilty saying that, but, um, it's been, it's been fun. And then, you know, as you know, I've got, um, my next book coming out, um, uh, in a few weeks and, you know, it's different than the previous ones because it's an edited volume, uh, along with my friend, uh, Josh Brown. And, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that, but that's been a side project over the last, I'd say nine, 10 months. That's been also a lot of fun. Great. Lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and Carl Richards has done the sketches, I think. Is that right? Yeah, it's it's unbelievable how how well this all came together. Orig- I called it's an edited volume called "How I Invest My Money," 
Right. And the idea is to um, bring financial experts from financial advice, portfolio management, venture capital, you know, serious money people to give a transparent and revealing view of their own portfolios and more broadly how they save, spend, spend, invest, borrow, you know, how they manage their money life. And so the original, I called Carl, he, I think he was the first person I called. I said, hey, I'd love you to contribute. And he said, yes. And he called me back a couple weeks later. He's like, I, 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 I think I don't want to write a chapter. I'm like, oh, that, that's a bummer. He mm. said, but instead, why don't I read what everybody else did and draw a custom sketch for each of their chapters? And I said, okay, number one, that's awesome. And number two, that's 25 times the work. He said, that's okay. <laughs> and so we've got 25 chapters of, uh, including, you know, including mine, um, Josh Brown, Morgan Housel, Christine Benz, um, lot, lots of amazing contributions. And uh, yeah, there, there is a classic Carl Richards sketch at the beginning of each chapter, which is sort of Carl's in his brilliant mind, his interpretation of the core message of that particular chapter. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, what was the what was the motivation? I mean, I I, I kind of get it. I think this is my perspective because obviously you've kindly let me had a, a a preview a copy of 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 your book of the manuscript, um, and. You know, there's a there's an ends. I was really I was really thrilled to read it because there's a bit of voyeurism in in my, in me of, um, of, of 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 wanting to know how all the experts or other experts, I suppose, like maybe I can count myself as an expert, um, how they invest the money. And and I must admit, one of the thing I always say to my clients is that you know my portfolio is in exactly the same portfolio as the one I'm recommending you. Yeah. You know, I don't do anything different. I don't go outside these boundaries. These are the boundaries that I believe in. This is the, the, the this is how I invest. I wouldn't put you in into something that I didn't believe in myself. And I'm also not, you know, I'm I'm also I have no intention of getting myself killed. You know, <laughs> I don't I don't want to get get into something that is going to blow myself up, either blow yeah. my portfolio up or especially my clients, which I'd feel even worse about. But so so when I saw your manuscript, I was like, oh, it's going to be really interesting. How do, do, do everyone does everyone kind of follow the advice that they that they, they spout? Yeah, well, the, well, so the short answer, I think, is yes. But there is another level, which is that everybody's life is a complete mess in, in, in their own <laughs> special way. I'm sure you know, from our pre-conversation, my sense is that your life is sort of perfectly organized and you're, you're going to, my, my life's kind of a mess. Um, no, you know, every, everyone's got stuff to deal with, aging parents, growing children, communities that they want to help. And, you know, this isn't, you know, just a bullet point list of the funds or securities that people own. What they are, what what these are, are stories. Uh, because we didn't give any instruction. You know, Josh Brown wrote a blog about a year and a half ago called "How I Invest My Own Money," where he just observed that he's been in this business for many, many years, and no one's really ever asked him that. And so he decided to kind of reveal, um, you know, the the stocks and bonds that he owns. Now, you know, he, like many of the contributors, run financial planning firms, and his core assets are in the same portfolios as the clients, um, which doesn't mean that he can't pay off his mortgage early or do a venture or angel investment with a friend's business. I mean, so quickly, you know, every, every story becomes very personal. And what we said to the contributors, um, uh, the, 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 the possible contributors was, Hey, like here's Josh's essay. Note that it touches on, you know, some of the things he owns, but also some of the values um, that he's trying to 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 live live for. Um, and that was it. And what we got back were stories, um, very twenty five, very different stories. Um, some on just a single topic at some length and every chapter is like four pages as you saw so it's very easily consumed which is nice and other people with sort of 
broader but not as deep in terms of how they 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 manage their 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 money life so the answer is yes but it, it people are being consistent with um, the advice that they give to others while at the same time, um, just because you own the same 60-40 portfolio as your client doesn't mean that you don't have something to deal with like an aging parent who maybe is growing ill or something going on in your community that you want to support. Um, and that, you know, that immediate complication creates the urgency to do whatever is necessary to achieve that goal, fund that liability. And as a result, you, you, you have 25 unique chapters. Yeah. Yeah. And what, which were the stories that really stood out to you? The one that always comes to mind immediately is Desarte Yarnway. So I don't know if you know Desarte, but he's a young, uh, up and coming advisor um, he, here in the States and um, for, first generation American. His, his, his parents grew up in uh, sub-Saharan Africa. They, they, they came over here and it's just this, you know, it's a beautiful story about family and where money fit into their trajectory, their ability to come here to help each other out, to help their community, and now Desarte's career as a financial advisor helping others. I mean, it's just, it's beautifully written, and you can tell it's written from the heart. Um, so it, it just exemplifies what I was hoping, uh, hoping we, we would get. You know, there are some names in the book that I think are reasonably well known. Morgan Housel, who has just written, you know, the psychology of money, yep. you know, instant classic. Uh, he has the opening chapter in there, and and you know, writes in some detail about money as a source of of freedom and independence, but from his lens, from the lens of how his, you know, he talked about how his parents raised him. He talked about his relationship with his wife and his children and his career and how money creates options and, and, and um, op, uh, opportunity and, and independence. But, you know, through the lens of what, you know, the, the way that his life has gone, which is, you know, by definition, unique. Um, I'll, I'll, mention, um, uh, I'll mention two more quickly. One, one is Bob C. Right, who's a, you know, well-known blogger and, and incredibly smart uh, guy um, who, uh, married three adult children, a bunch of grandchildren, and he spent his entire chapter writing about a lake house, a lake house that's been in the family. Mm. And the money that they've spent on it is technically a pretty bad investment. You know, are they gonna get their money out? You know, what's their IRR? Mm. He doesn't care. It, it's a place that they have invested money in that makes his family happy, yeah. which is unbelievable. And the flip side, you know, a very young, uh, another young up and coming advisor, um, Leanne Miko, uh, who uh, she lives in uh, California, um, growing up uh, impoverished, growing up on food stamps, um, growing up with money being a uh, just an, a, a, a tough issue in terms of getting by. And her personal journey of how she's built her investment portfolio and her financial advice practice in the context of surviving and thriving on the back of some pretty, you know, troubled childhood experiences. So yeah. hopefully I'm giving you a sense that like, they're, they're all great stories. Yeah. And, <clears throat> you know, the, 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 obviously you've taken, you know, all these stories and the wisdom, et cetera, that you've got from there. And what, if you were advising me how to save, spend, and invest my money, you know, or you know, I'm, we were just having a having a cup of coffee, yeah. and I've got and I and I say, Brian, you know, I, I don't know anything about this stuff. You've got five minutes. What would you tell me? What I would tell you is that we don't need to get into the details of whether you should buy a tracker fund or a particular insurance policy or anything like that until we've spent a good five minutes and maybe longer on values, on purpose. Um, you know, every, like, a, you know, broken record maybe, but everybody uh, came at their story from a very unique perspective. And what comes across in all of them 
is that the way that they manage their money life helps to define who they are as a person. It helps to articulate the values that they have, that they want to live. And, you know, we've talked about this in the past and, you know, the geometry of wealth, you know, speaks to this, my, my previous book in a lot of detail that, you know, true wealth is the ability to underwrite a meaningful life. Yeah. And it's hard. It's really hard. It's never easy, even for people like, like me or you who know how to run the numbers, because it's not a numeracy issue. It's an emotional issue. It's a psychological issue. So if we had a five minute coffee and uh, please someday, can we be in person and have <laughs> coffee or, or something a little stronger? Um, that conversation would be about what's important to you. Yeah. And then marry that conversation about values and purpose to specific planning. Yeah. Uh, and it's sort of the awkward step, but an important one where you can talk about what does a meaningful, what does a meaningful life cost? Can you afford a meaningful life? And the answer in many cases is yes, but often not in the way a financial advisor and client come about trying to answer that question. No, no. <clears throat> and um, it's quite interesting. We've been doing some work um, in, uh, you know, in, in explaining the value um, that we think that we provide to clients and uh and we kind of been looking at the in essence the kind of classic iceberg is at the top which is uh you know people come to us about tax they come to us an investment fund they come to us about you know kind of maybe yeah legislation issues that are causing them complications uh you know around those family matters and and yeah and then we obviously go you know we can deal with that, but what I really want to know is, what are you really trying to achieve? Who are you? What is that? What is a you know? For us, it's always about retirement. Well, what would a really meaningful retirement look like to you? Yeah, yeah. And 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 I think there is a general kind of step back uh, from 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 clients when they first meet us to kind of go, ah, hmm, interestingly, you asked that because actually, I'm not sure, um, because. Yeah. And and I and I'm I'm surprised you asked me that question. And I'm always like, you know what? It's kind of table stakes that we can deal with your tax. You know, we can deal with your uh, investment piece. We can we we know that stuff. Yeah. What we don't know is, is who you are and what your story is. And what and, and not only not knowing, we don't know what your story is up until this point. But what would you like your future story to be? Um. So. Uh, yeah. So yeah, you're you're right. It's it's it, it. Everyone comes from this, from the specific, you know, from their own from their own story place. They there's a few quotes that I've 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 jotted down mm. that are really stood out for me um, that I'd like to ask you about. So Morgan Housel, uh, who you, you referenced his uh, his great book that he's just come out with, Psychology of Money, um, but he says, no matter how we save or invest. I'm sure we'll always have the goal of independence and we'll always do whatever maximizes for sleeping well at night. Well, yeah. Well, yeah. So I mean, Morgan's arguably the, the best financial writer on the planet right now. So his, his work, his words speak powerfully for himself, but you know, when people read the book and read his essay, which is the, the, the one right up front, it, it's on this issue of having flexibility, of you know, um, not having to worry about things, of not having obligations that you don't want. Um, you know what he writes about, what I write, many of us wrote about in the book were, you know, is the fact that you know society sort of imposes certain scripts on us in terms of well, what's the life you should lead in terms of getting married, having kids, university, homes, vacations, and, you know, your expertise, retirement, which is the big, big topic. Um, well, that's a story, but it's not something you dig out of the ground or a leaf from a, like, it's not real, it's, it's a story, but stories are real in, in, in the neurological sense that they structure the way we see the world. And so, you know, what Morgan really got to 
and there were some other, you know, the, some other con uh, of the contributors talked about narrative or story specifically, um, where it's like, okay, I can write my own story. Like who, like to what you just said, how did I get here? But then how, how do I go forward? How do I imagine my future self? And, you know, so for example, Morgan paid off his mortgage. I paid off my mortgage a few years ago. And those decisions were not financially rational, right? Because yeah. it, in, in a low rate environment, um, I could have taken, I could have had a, a, a relatively small mortgage and invested the balance elsewhere and captured the spread. Okay, it's, it's the, the logic's really straightforward. But Morgan wrote about this. I wrote about this. I think Josh did, uh, Josh Brown did also, a few, few others did. There's just something about having the flexibility of knowing that you have your home and the <clears throat> bank can't take it from you. The government can if you don't pay your taxes, I suppose, but that's. <laughs> The, the black helicopters might be coming soon anyway. We're not going to talk about that. Um, so, yeah, flexibility, independence, peace of mind, time. He writes about time, Yeah, you know, being able to spend it however you'd like. Yeah, yeah. Um, one of the things I've mentioned a few times recently is I'd love people to be as present with how they, I think, especially the, luckily the people we we deal with, uh, they're very present on how they how they do spend their money, mm -hmm. and would love them to just be as present with how how they spend their time as well. Yeah, because you know, hopefully that their money will outlive them if we've done some good planning, but. Right. We kind of know how much money they've got. <laughs> we just don't know how much time they've got. Um, yeah. Right. So, right. Um, it's, uh, yeah, yeah. It, it's really important. And there's a, you know, today, not the topic of today, but there, there's a, a growing and fascinating literature on this topic of time affluence and, and, and the thinking about the relationship between money and time. And, um, one is, um, by definition, finite and unknowable and focusing on that is, it, you don't need to convince anyone that time is limited, but boy, is it hard to conduct yourself in a way where you actually show that you understand that. Yeah. 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 Um, and the one, the, the uh, slightly off topic here, but I think it's relevant. One of the other questions that I've asked people recently and kind of, it kind of has been brought home to me recently as well because uh, a close family member recently uh, died and suddenly and unexpectedly and in an accident and, you know, all that. Um, and I've asked this question a few times about, you know, if you were, if you were, if you were given an hour back with someone who has left the planet, who's died, if you mm -hmm. could have one hour, one hour with them again, yeah. just the one more hour to spend with them. How much, how much money would you pay for that hour? And I, and, and I hope that question just kind of highlights the, the value of our relationships and our, you know, and, and how that we can get sucked up into so many different things and even watching something on Netflix or what have you, when actually, you know, that precious hour may be just, well, we may be drifting away. Well said. No. My next quote that I love, I've got one from you, but I, I Carolyn Mc, McClanahan, is it? Carolyn yeah. McClanahan? Mm -hmm. My biggest takeaway for everyone is what my parents taught me. Invest in yourself. Your ability to work is your safest, safest and highest returning asset. I love it. Love it. I absolutely love this. Human capital. Um, yeah. A lot of the authors, including Carolyn, wrote about human capital. Um, our, you know, our skill, our devotion to our craft, our job, our vocation, um, and the importance of investing in that money, time, any other, you know, relevant 
resources so that you can, you know, effectively sell your labor or your ideas into the marketplace and receive something in return. Um, financial in, in return, you receive financial capital or maybe social capital in terms of, you know, the network that you build. But um, yeah, it, it, it's such a great line from Carolyn, who's really one of the most thoughtful financial advisors in the United States. She's a medical doctor by training. Now she's a financial advisor and she does really wonderful work at the crossroads of um, money and health. And so, you know, it comes with a certain gravitas that someone of her background can talk about what it means to invest in yourself and not worry about whether you're buying the right large cap value fund or the right intermediate term bond fund or whether your stock and bond allocation should be 70, 30 or 60, 40. You know, I, I did that stuff for 20 years. It's, it's largely a waste of time for most people. Um, if you have time and resources and you think about, well, how can I get paid for doing good work? How can I make a contribution to my community by devoting time? It's super important. And, you know, I'd say ha at least half the contributors in one way or another talked about human capital. Yeah. And so yeah. That, that the title, How I Invest, um, it's just not, you know, it's how I invest my money, but it's how I invest my skills, how I invest my time, how I invest in me. You know, I, uh, the, I, I, I'm not sure, and you may know um, kind of the average age of your contributors. What do you reckon? Well, I think the youngest is in their mid-20s and the oldest is in their mid-60s. Yeah. Um, so it's a really diverse group of people by, you know, age, gender, background, um, probably the average age. And you know what, now that you've asked me this, uh, I'm going to figure it out afterwards. Um, I'd say the average age is probably between 40 and 45. Yeah, I would have, uh, and not knowing all the individuals, I would have kind of guessed that. I there's a level of depth and experience in the in 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 the essays, um, and therefore, uh, therefore I think, you know, there's a lot of younger people, and and, I, and possibly they won't be listening to, to the Retirement Cafe podcast, <laughs> um, but maybe their parents or their grandparents may be listening, and maybe they'll get their younger people in their lives to possibly listen, but. The, this statement about investing yourself and 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 your wise words there about looking at the contribution that you can make, I think in this current world and the and the youngsters coming out of university uh, in the UK anyway are struggling to find roles and opportunities because workplaces are you know they're they're closing their workforces they're letting people go, um, and. And and they're feeling that you know there's a, I can only imagine that they're feeling a little lost. They're feeling like hold on, I've done my university and I've done this and I've done that and 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 there doesn't appear to be any opportunities. It's really expensive to get on the housing ladder. I can't get a job. I'm looking to you know, and and if you can just turn that around and go okay, well knowing that knowing all of that, what is it that I can do? And, and moving into this world that you just said of what, what's the contribution that I can make into my community? And, and that doesn't always have to be around money. It can be just whatever contribution you can make, because every contribution that you do make, you're actually investing in yourself. Mm -hmm. you're actually get, you, will get a, you will get a return from that. And, and it may be an opportunity. It may be someone that you meet. It may be a new skill that you learn by just offering your services. Um, but it's also a darn good thing to have on your CV when, when you do approach the next employer, because you and they say, "Well, what do you, what, you what, what did you do in, <laughs> during lockdown and COVID?" You know, well, actually, I went and helped my community. I went and did this. I picked up litter. I helped the the, the nursing home. I whatever it may be, and 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 it will create opportunity because you are delivering value, and possibly not from monetary response, but just because you're delivering value. 
Yeah, it's wise words. Um, and, but it's hard. It's hard. Look, I mean, you, you can't discount the fact that at any age, but, you know, including, you know, younger age, it's hard to pay the bills. I mean, you know, this, this notion of financial fragility is so profound, at least in the United States with, you know, so many people, you know, unable to, you know, um, meet even small emergencies, um, you know, um, work that's not stable, wages that are relatively low. Um, what I hope, you know, this book and maybe some of my other work and work that some of the contributors have done elsewhere, which in total is a massive amount of work, is give people, uh, you know, some encouragement um, and a positive attitude and mindset toward calibrating that time that they spend making the contribution and may, and because it is it is a little bit of a uh, um, you know you make yourself a little bit vulnerable you hope that people notice and that you get paid back somehow some way um, sometime and you know may, may, maybe you know may, may, I don't know may, maybe the book gives a little bit of inspiration because there's so many different stories uh, of people who have navigated crappy childhoods, difficult careers, weird times in history. Um, and, you know, there are ways to figure it out, which isn't to say that it's always easy. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I yeah, and I think you can get inspiration from hearing other people's stories, hearing that actually, because you could generally, in today's world, you could be thinking, you know, no one's ever had it as bad as this. And I can imagine that that's how you could be feeling. Um, and and they flip it around and go, you know what, there are, there's lots of people who sound like they've had it pretty tough and they've come through and they've made smart decisions and they've, and they've delivered value into the world and they've, and they've got rewarded for it. Yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, I, um, well, I, I commend, I commend this book to, to all my listeners, Brian. I'm a really, I mean, I will be actually, cause obviously I've just got it on a electronic format. I will be visiting the bookshops <laughs> and actually to get myself a hard cop, hardback copy. Um, uh, because I, I do want it on my bookshelf. Um, uh, and the next time I see you, I will hopefully, uh, get you to autograph it. Um, and maybe I'll, maybe I'll go through, I'll go through all the contributors and, um, maybe I can get them on the podcast. That'll be a, a, a maybe you give me a new interviewee guest list. <laughs> there, like when you go through the list there, there's people from all walks of life that yeah. I think knowing you now for a bit and what you put out into the world, you know, to the extent that you meet a few new people through this from, from, from your point of view, that, that's a, that's a good thing. There are some, especially, you know, some of the younger financial advisors, um, they don't have the years of experience, but you can tell that some of them already have a fair amount of wisdom. Great. Great. Well, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I thoroughly enjoyed uh, chatting to you again today. Um, this afternoon for me, this morning for you. Yeah. Um, let's hope that we can meet up again, <laughs> either okay. either stateside or UK side, who knows, um, yeah. soon. Um, uh, yeah, once again, uh, I, I'll commend and put the information on the book in the show notes, etc. Just quickly, Brian, sorry, before I do that, where can people find out um, maybe your new website and new business um, and more details about you? Yeah, very simple. Uh, shapingwealth.com. Um, right. It has, uh, you know, sort of very... Um, uh, a simple introduction to the platform that I'm building. And then, you know, I'm also very active on Twitter. So at Brian Portnoy, and um, there's a really great community of financial Twitter, so-called FinTwit, uh, where nice people share lots of good ideas uh, about lots of things. So, yeah. uh, then, then, you know, come, come introduce yourself to me there as well. Marvellous. Brilliant. Thanks for your time and um, hope to see you again soon. Yeah, look forward to it. Thank you so much. So until next time, this is Justin King helping you feel more informed in your retirement.